devastating for our economy and particularly around free movement, uh, deeply damaging to Scotland's population and therefore our economy in the long term. The Prime Minister said earlier that she thinks the worst thing that could happen now is another independence referendum. You said in response to that that what the people of Scotland want is more important than what the PM wants. It sounds a bit like you're getting ready for another campaign. Well, you know, I think the Prime Minister fears that she would lose another Scottish independence referendum, so she's running scared of the verdict of the people. It's probably the same reason why she doesn't want another EU referendum, because she thinks she might lose that. I mean, people who are confident in their arguments don't run away from the verdict of the people. But, you know, I think people in Scotland are probably getting sick and tired of hearing what the Prime Minister wants. Uh, what the Prime Minister wants is not the most important thing here. What Scotland needs is what matters most. And you know, Brexit is demonstrating on a daily basis right now that Scotland needs the ability to take our own decisions uh, so that we're not dragged down the wrong path by Tory ideologues and we don't constantly face the prospect of having policies imposed by Westminster governments that we didn't vote for. So I do think what Scotland needs is far more important than what the Prime Minister might want for her own narrow political interests. Did you put that issue of independence on the table in those talks? It wasn't a meeting specifically about independence. It was about the Brexit negotiations. It was also a trilateral meeting with the Welsh government. Uh, but the Prime Minister is under no illusions about my view on independence, although I think... Uh, what is happening with Brexit right now is illustrating that fundamental point that Scotland needs to have the ability to take our own decisions. Having decisions taken for us at Westminster is what's getting us into this mess that will do so much damage to the Scottish economy, to society, to the prospects of future generations, to our reputation in the world. Uh, that, in my view, really makes and strengthens the case that the ability to take our own decisions is what matters most. It does sound more than normal, like you are moving towards I, that position. You know, I've, I've said I will make my views on that clear uh, in the next uh, matter of weeks, but you know, I've also said pretty clearly, I'd, you know, I've just come out of a meeting with the Prime Minister, uh, the latest in a series of meetings and conversations with the Prime Minister, where it doesn't seem as if she is willing to listen to the interests or the views or the voice of people in Scotland. There is even at times uh, what appears to be a failure to recognise that Scotland has any distinctive interests in all of this and it really does bring into sharp focus this uh, issue for Scotland. Are we going to have decisions taken for us at Westminster that will do so much damage to us or is it time to give ourselves the ability to take those decisions ourselves? Well, this is the you like with Sky News. I just wondered whether you thought that some of the offers to Northern Ireland, what do you make of that in relation to what could be offered to Scotland as regards Brexit? Well, I've said all along, I don't want to see anything that jeopardises the Good Friday Agreement or peace in Ireland, uh, and therefore I am completely behind the efforts of the Irish government and others uh, across the island of Ireland to avoid uh, any restoration of a hard border. Uh, but obviously I also have concerns as Scottish First Minister that if we end up with a situation where Northern Ireland is effectively in the single market, then that puts Scotland at a very serious competitive disadvantage. So I, I don't want to deny Northern Ireland that outcome, but if that's to be Northern Ireland's future, uh, I think it's really important that Scotland has that same future too. And would the 35 SNP MPs be available to the Prime Minister if, for example, she did drop some of her red lines and adopted the common market 2.0 Norway plus plan. She's just pretty much told me she's not going to and that she's sticking to all of those red lines. You know, we're in the situation of being asked to uh, back a withdrawal agreement that takes Scotland against what Scotland voted for out of the European Union, out of the single market, something that will do huge damage to our economy and on the strength of a political declaration that is vague and non-binding and delivers an outcome that will make all of his worse off. That's not something any self-respecting Scottish MP, in my view, should be voting for, and it's not something SNP MPs will vote for. Some of the Brexiters are suggesting that this House of Commons be suspended, prorogued, in order to get a no-deal Brexit through. What do you make of that? Well, if it wasn't so serious, it would be utterly laughable. These are the same people, of course, who you know, campaigned for Brexit on the basis that it was taking back control for the United Kingdom Parliament. And at the first whiff of Parliament actually exerting control, they want Parliament, it sounds to me, pretty much abolished. You know, Jacob Reeds, Mogg and Co. don't seem to care too much for democracy. And what worries me 
after the discussion with the Prime Minister, is it's those people she's putting all of our efforts into trying to persuade, rather than trying to build a compromise uh, with more reasonable voices. There's a lot of rhetoric on both sides, but what can you practically do if Theresa May constantly says no to well, facilitating that? I'm not going to go further than what I've said. I will set out my views in greater detail on this in uh, a matter of weeks, which I, I said to you, I think, when we spoke uh, last saying, week. Well, I'm SNP keeping you in... Uh, that's not at the SNP Spring Conference. Uh, it will be at a time and a place that I tell you in, uh, in due course. But, you know, you can't stand in the way of people having the right of cho to choose uh, indefinitely. The Prime Minister's position has never been a sustainable one, uh, and it isn't a sustainable but one any longer. I said question time today, she, she, she stood against independence. So well, you've been told twice today that you can't have it, well, and you're going to say you will The Scottish people, hard. I think, have getting fed up of listening to Theresa May telling them what... No, you're getting fed up of that, Torkel. <laughs> uh, and uh, 